Good evening and praise the Lord. It's a pleasure to be back with you guys again to be able to share the word of God. And and there's some things that the Lord has laid on my heart uh, tonight that uh, I was wanting to share with you guys. Uh, we're going to go to Psalms chapter 23 today. And it's a, a psalm that was written by King David. And uh, right now in the United States, uh, we're going through like the fall season. And this is the point when the leaves are starting to turn and fall off the trees and everything's going into hibernation and changing. And uh, the land is, you know, starting to prepare for winter time. Uh, I'm not sure how the seasons work in India, but... Uh, right now, we're in a season called autumn, or some people will call it fall, and that's when all the leaves and starts start changing colors and stuff. So maybe for the next lesson, I might like to try to find a nice, pretty place to where you can kind of see some of the scenery and things that are talking about. So even through death, uh, you know, death of these leaves, it still brings beauty. And that's what we want to talk about tonight as we uh, go into Psalms chapter 23. Um, and then it even brings me into a place in John chapter 15 where it talks about uh, he is the vine and we are the branches. Uh, branches that don't bear fruit, he removes. But the branches that do bear fruit, he will go turn around and he will prune them so they will even bear more fruit. And I don't know, this is what the Lord has kind of laid on my heart tonight. I'm kind of wondering how many of you guys are going through a pruning season or a season of change or things that say things maybe like they're going dormant or they're dying or, uh, you know, you, you don't understand what the Lord is doing in your life. And so that's why we're going to go to Psalms chapter 23. Uh, here in the States, they use this uh, passage of scripture a lot to preach at funerals uh, because where it talks about the valley of the shadow of death. And that is totally appropriate. But you know what? I don't think it's just for death. I think it even talks for life because sometimes even in life, we go through periods where things will die, things will change, uh, ministries will change. And, and sometimes God is trying to take us in a different direction and he does let something die because perhaps he's pruning it and it looks like it's dead, but it's not, but it's going to bring forth more light. And so that's what we want to talk about. And we'll go ahead and we'll open up in prayer before we get started. Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we just thank you, and we just praise you for every one of these people uh, that are gathered here to to uh, learn of you today here, Father. I just pray that you'll just give us the mind of Christ, Father, and help us to learn out of this passage today what you want us to learn. Help us to build plot to our lives, Father, and even help us to even be able to share and minister with somebody else. Holy Spirit, you are the true teacher. Uh, you take complete charge. You are in full control. And Father, I just pray that you'll just come and just teach us and let your Holy Spirit move as he wills, touching hearts and changing lives. Father, help us to decrease so that way you may increase, Father. Father, I just pray that you'll just lead and guide and just direct us and just direct every word that comes out of my mouth today and let your anointing uh, and your, the, your anointing of your Holy Spirit to be on it. Father, we just want to thank you and we just praise you and we just glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. And the whole chapter, it's not a very long chapter. It's only like six verses, but it starts out, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I will not be in need. Some translation says, I will not be in want. And it says, he lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Some translations will say still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Certainly goodness and faithfulness will follow me all the days of my life. And my dwelling will be in the house of the Lord forever. And amen. And so that is true. And like I said, people here in the States, a lot of times they will preach this at funerals. But I don't think it's always so why 
in verse 6, it says, Certainly goodness and faithfulness will follow me all the days of my life. I think it also uh, applies for the here and now. Because if you have died absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. You're already in heaven. So why at this point are you declaring certainly goodness and faithfulness will follow me all the days of my life? If it was, if this did not transpose or, you know, or transpire at times in your life, that that's my question. So uh, I, I don't think it's just for death only. There is a time that, that, hey, we may walk through the valley of shadow of the death. But a lot of times when we're walking in through real valleys in our life, it feels like death. But even in those times, it says, you know, fear no evil because, you know, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me, you know, and it's just because he is the true shepherd and and a shepherd will will have a rod and a staff. Sometimes they'll use the rod to prog their uh, sheep to uh, bring them back in a different direction. And if they don't heed to the rod, well, then they get a staff and that staff will hook around their neck then and then they can drag them, that shepherd can drag them wherever they need to go to safety. Uh, And so these, you know, this rod and staff is not like no form of punishment at all. That they're 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 there to to keep you safe. That's what a shepherd uses them for, Bill, so he can keep the sheep safe. So it says, "Your rod and your staff they comfort me." And it's and we'll start off from the beginning. Of course, the Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. You know, God does provide everything that we need, even if you're on the mountaintop or you're in the valley. I don't care. You're in your darkest days. God does provide for you. Well, even in the, uh, also another Psalm, David even says, if I even made my bed in Hades, you will go there with me. So, I mean, God will go with you to the ends of the earth. He, he, you know, w- you know, no matter how low you sink, you know, he will leave the 99 and go search out for even for the one lost one. So, uh, you being his child, I mean, how much more is he going to even do for you? And he says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. And he leads me beside quiet waters. So he's providing for you. Uh, that's what a shepherd does. A shepherd will keep moving their sheep around to make sure they've got plenty of grass to graze on and that they've got water to drink and, you know, a, a place where they can lie down and refresh and all of that. that. That's part of a shepherd's thing. And so that's for God. You know, he, he wants to provide for you. And when I read those verses, it, it brings peace and comfort because it just sounds like a relaxing beautiful place, you know, in green pastures beside quiet waters. He restores your soul and he guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And then, of course, even this part, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. So, you know, unfortunately, our whole lives can't be spent on the mountaintop. Uh, There is times that we do go through valleys and valleys is the place where we grow. And sometimes it may even feel like a death. Maybe it's a pruning. Uh, Maybe, you know, God is doing something in your life to help your ministry to grow. Right now, it may feel like maybe it's not going so well. Or, you know, uh, you know, why is, you know, it not growing or da, 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 whatever is going on. But it don't mean that God is not there and God's not on the scene. And it don't mean that God's not doing anything about it either. You know, because he is there with you and he sticks closer than a brother to you. And so that, so that as the thing of it, uh, you know, even though if you're walking through a valley, he is there for you. And if you kind of think about it on the mountaintops or at least around here, mountaintops, You know, they're kind of barren. That's where all the snow is and all the high wind and all that. But when you look into a valley, down in the valley, that's where you find the trees, the flowers, the grass. You'll find the brook. That's where you find the life is down in the valley. Uh, So, you know, even the Bible tells you, you know, count it all joy even when you suffer various trials. Because these work patience in you. So, uh just because things may be dormant, may not be going the way that you planned, or even if you think maybe it's dying, a dream is dying, or etc., they don't mean that God's not there with you. 
And it don't mean that he's not doing something in your life. Because uh, sometimes, you know, maybe he's just kind of pruning your back just to, just to be able to help you to grow and to increase. And it's, you know, and it says, then you prepare a table uh, before me in the presence of my enemies. When I was a child, when I read that verse, that always would scare me. He'd be like, oh my gosh, I got to sit at a table with my enemies. No, he didn't mean that at all. Uh yeah, you will be set. You'll be. He will prepare a table before. Uh, you know, you know, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yes, he is going to prepare a table, and your enemies are going to be there because your enemies are going to see how much God has blessed you, what all He's done in your life. It's just a time to be able to show off who God is. You know, uh, He's going to prepare this table. Uh, for you in the presence of your enemies so they can see, you know, in spite of everything that they have done, how much God has blessed you and how you've overcame. And it says, you have anointed my head with oil and my cup overflows. That's it. You know, God don't have to do anything. And every one of us, you know, every one of us have a calling and anointing on our life. We've been equipped with the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and we should always be spending time in his presence and letting, and just keeping our cups full so they can overflow. And, and it says certainly faithfulness and, uh, certainly goodness and faithfulness will follow me all the days of my life. Like I said, this is just not about death. This is about life too. And my dwelling will be in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah, he is preparing us a mansion too one day up in heaven. But you know what? We have a house here. I mean, your whole body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit as well. So, uh, and it, and it's a place where God wants to dwell, you know. And of course, we have our church buildings and stuff too. But you know what? Your own body is the temple of the Holy Spirit as well. And so... uh you know, and my dwelling will be in the house of the Lord forever. And so let let you be a dwelling place for the Lord as well. I would just want to encourage you with that as well. So um, so even if at times there's something that you feel like maybe you're being pruned or things aren't going well, or maybe possibly you feel like, you know, you're dying or, you know, not like physical death, but just maybe things in your life are dying, changing, all of that. You know, God is there and God is with you and God's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. And even at times it feels like he's quiet, not talking, you know, just remember, he still sticks closer to you than a brother. I heard this one uh, expression one time, and it made so much sense. Uh, like whenever you're in school, uh, when a, a teacher gives a test, the teacher doesn't talk. And they use that as the same analogy for the Lord. And when we're going through a time of testing, uh, the you know, the teacher's not talking during you know, not talking during the test, you know, and so, uh, I wanted to encourage you with that as well today. Um, so no matter what you're going through, uh, God is there and we're going to, you know, in faith, believing that it, you know, that, uh, God is just going to bring more fruit out of it, you know, cause his word never returns void and God is going to accomplish every uh, the every good work that He has started in you. God is faithful to finish it. Uh, so, so I just wanted to encourage you for that. I I don't know why that was kind of laid on my heart or what have you, but I wanted just to bring that to you today. Uh, you know, God's not through with you yet. Uh, you know, you've got more chapters in your life to live. Uh, God is going to birth more things in your life, do more things through your life, and just wanted to encourage you with that kind of, with that today. And and we will we'll just kind of read through it one more time, and and I might even go ahead and hit John chapter fifteen while we're at it because we still got some more time here. Let me get my tablet here pulled up. It says, "Yeah, the Lord is my shepherd; I will not be in need. He lets me lie down in green pastures." He leads me besides quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. 
Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. You are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Certainly, goodness and faithfulness will follow me all the days of my life, and my dwelling will be in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah, let me go over here to John. John, 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 where are you? There you are. Yeah, I'm using this tablet here. Yeah, I like it. In John cha chapter 15, starting with verse 1, I am the true vine, and the Father is the wine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that way it may bear more fruit. Are You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you. And just as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, it must remain on the vine, so neither can uh, you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. No one, uh, no one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And of course, I always tell people, apart from him, I am nothing. But that's a Teresa thing. And it says, if anyone does not remain in me, he's thrown away like the branch and dries up and gather uh, them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be his disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I also loved you and remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love just as kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. These things I have spoken to you that uh, my joy may be in you and that your joy may me be made full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I've loved you. No greater uh, ha love has no one than this that the person laid down his own life for his friends you are my friends if you do what i command you no longer do i call you to be slaves for the slave does not know what his master is doing but i've called you friends because all things i have heard my from my father i've made known to you you do you did not choose me but i chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. You were of this world. The world would love you as its own, but because you're not of this world, but I choose you out of the world because of this, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a slave is not greater than his master. If he persecuted me, they will persecute you as well. If they follow my word, they will follow yours also. But these things they will do on the account of my name because they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have not sinned, but now they have no excuse for their sin. The one who hates me hates my father also. If I had done uh, among them, the works which no one else did, they would uh, they would not have sinned, but now they have both seen and hated me and my father as well. But this has happened so that the world uh, this has happened so that the word that is written in their law will be fulfilled. They hated me for no reason. When the Helper comes, which is the Holy Spirit, whom I will send to you from the Father, namely the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify about me. And you're testifying as well because you have been with me from the beginning. And this was uh, the whole uh, John chapter 15. And all these things are all connected together, you know, about bearing fruit, being with the vine. Uh, and of course, the vines that does produce fruit are pruned so that way they will... Uh, 
continue to even do more uh, fruit. Uh, and of course, being having sticking close to the Father, because apart from Him, you can do nothing. And remaining in Him and His words remaining in you, and then uh, loving one one another. You know that that's you know something that's in the Bible too, because you know that that's how we show the love of the Father. You know, uh, you know, even even Jesus' prayer before He went to the cross is said, "Let." Let let uh, them be one, just as you and I are one, and so that that's it. So that's how we show the love of the Father is by the love that we show each other, and because the world hates you, but we shouldn't hate each other. And the only reason why the world hates you is because they hated you know Jesus. They you know couldn't stand for what he stood for, and they was left without excuse. Uh, and so because they hate God and because they hate the son, now, of course, they hate you. And sometimes that goes into that pruning process, too. You know, God will remove people out of your life that is not good for you, uh, that is pulling you down or pulls you away from the father. Sometimes God will cut off and he'll sever those relationships. He'll bring death to those relationships. Going back to Psalms chapter 23, uh, sometimes uh, those dark places and those valleys and stuff, you know, it is because pe- of the kind of people that's in our lives that has, uh, you know, no good intentions for us. They're not God's best for us. And so, you know, God cuts them out and moves them out of your life. So that way he can bring people that's going to build you up, lift you up, be true brothers and sisters, you know, and that way, you know, you can have that fellowship and all of that. Um, so just wanted to encourage you with that today because I, I don't, I don't know why, you know, I feel, you know, been feeling all, you know, this heaviness and people are feeling a little downtrodden or kind of like, we're well, God, where are you? Maybe it's just because of, uh, the nature of what all is going on in the world and with COVID and with other things, you know, pe- people, you know, kind of feel like they're lost and without a direction or, you know, uh, you know, things are changing and, and they are, you know, I'm, you know, I by no means, you know, like I have ministered before, I do not know when Jesus Christ is coming back, but I know enough of the Bible and I read enough of the Bible and I'm sure you do too. You can see, the signs are coming to pass faster and faster and faster. I mean, you know, so who knows if he's coming tomorrow or still in a hundred years, you know, his return is close. Uh, I mean, cause the Bible says when you see all these things, you know, going on, look up your redemption draweth nigh. So I want to be encouraged if, if, you know, as you're going through life and things are changing or you're wondering why this is dying you know, why is this not working or what's going on here? You know, what's going on with, you know, these people in my life or, you know, what's going on maybe in my life, my marriage, my ministry, you know, what's going on in my family, no matter what the situation is, God has a plan and he's got a purpose. He's sitting on the throne. He's in control. Uh, He knows exactly where he's at. He's not forgot about you. And he will be there to lead and guide and he'll direct you because he's the good shepherd. And he will bring you to those green pastures and you will not want. And, you know, uh, and he will prepare that table uh, before you in the presence of your enemies. You know, he, you know, he will definitely show them you know, how God, you know, the Father has taken care of you, how he has blessed you and, uh, you know, make him kind of wish that, hey, they they had what you got, you know, that, that kind of thing. So I just wanted to encourage you with that, you know, uh, today. No matter what kind of darkness you feel like you're walking through, you're not alone. Uh, the father is right there, bef- uh, right beside you and his rod and his staff is going to comfort you. And, uh, you know, he is, you know, goodness and blessings will follow you all the days of your life. And yes, 
you will live and dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that, you know what, that is, that is great news. And that feels peaceful and, you know, it brings comfort. So no matter what's going on in your life, you know, or, you know, or if you're sick, et cetera, you know, God is right there with you and he's going to take good care of you. And even though you may feel like you are walking in the valley of the shadow of death, you know, you will fear no evil, you know, because he's right there with you and he will be there to comfort you and to take care of you. And so I just wanted to encourage you with words like that today. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll pray and close out, you know, because uh, I'm feeling, you know, peace that kind of needed to share what needed to be shared. And, and, and we'll go ahead and we'll close out in prayer. And, and it was an honor to teach the word of God to you today. And I just pray that you got something out of it. I just pray the word of God ministered to you today. And, uh, you know, you will uh, have a word that you can share with someone else. And we'll just go ahead and we'll pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for your word. And thank you and praise you that uh, we was was able to build study together. And Father, I just pray that your anointing will be upon this word. And Father, I just pray that uh, the people, uh, the men and women in India, uh, these pastors, that Father God, that you'll just lead and, get, and guide and you'll just direct them, Father. And, and Father, help their ministries to be able to grow, provide for every need, Father, uh, physically, financially, spiritually, emotionally. Father, I just pray that you will just, uh, you know, uh, take care of these pastors. Father, take care of these congregations and, and uh, the flocks that attend these churches. Father, Father, I just pray that you'll just uh, be with them and that you'll just lead and you'll just guide and, and you'll just direct them. And, and Father God, we just pray for revival for the nation of India right now in Jesus' name. And Father God, I just pray that your Holy Spirit will just sweep over the nation in Jesus' name. And, and Father God, I just pray that uh, you will have your way because you love India, Father. You died for India, and India is your country, Father. And Father, I just uh, just pray right now, uh, you know, for uh, the people, and uh, and I just pray that you're just going to be able to provide for their needs, Father. That you'll just break this spirit of poverty off of this land in Jesus' name, Father. And and Father God, I just pray that many people will come to know you as their Lord and Savior, Father. And just bless this work and bless this ministry, Father. And and Father, we just want to give you all the honor and the glory and just all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, guys. Well, um, I hope uh, this word has ministered to you and it was a privilege of being able to teach you today and I look forward to doing this again real soon and the next time we'll uh, I'll try to find a nice place that way you can kind of see all the color leaves and stuff because they're just now starting so hopefully here in the next couple weeks it'll all be at a peak and that way I can show you what what I'm what I'm talking about then so but uh, I love you guys and I just appreciate you guys and thank you for your prayers and and I'll be praying for you as well and uh, um, we, you know, I just wanted to say just God bless every one of you. Uh, may you walk in his peace and in his favor and that he'll just lead in God and he'll just direct uh, your footsteps into all righteousness and, and that you'll be uh, led by him. And, uh, and I really thank you guys and I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much and you guys have a good night and God bless. Bye-bye.